20-year-old Amaya Leslie is starting her workday. Around the corner, Alan McGillivray is also heading into her shift. But after nine hours on duty, they haven't earned a cent. We're working hard. Look after us. <laughs> Pay us. Yeah, we don't get anything during placement, and it is hard, and it causes a lot of stress. Welcome to my beautiful flat. <laughs> How many of you live here? Uh, there's 14 in total. Wow. Amaya's in her second year of studying for her Bachelor of Nursing. How much does flatting in Dunedin cost? Um, it's $165 a week, and that's just for your room. And so what are you going to have for dinner tonight for your placement? Um, so I'm going to use my grapes. Got my noodles, they're always trusty. To become a registered nurse, you have to complete at least 1,100 hours of clinical placements. Not only is the work unpaid, but they have to buy their own scrubs, which are $160. There's no help for travel either. So, is it quite expensive to get to work? Uh, yeah, you've got to pay for your petrol. And your placements, they're not always in the town you live in, right? You have to go out of town quite a bit. Uh, yeah, at least one of our placements have to be out of town. That's another expense. That's another <laughs> expense, yeah. Especially because if you're paying for... Um, rent at home and then also having to pay for your accommodation. You're paying double rent while you're on placement, while you're working as hard as you can mm. and eight and a half hours every day, 40 hour weeks with no pay. So it must be quite hard for students to fit in like a part-time job to fund it? Uh, yeah, it is. We don't get any financial support, so it's all on us. Hi Kathleen, how are you? I'm just going to do a set of obs on you, is that OK? Yes, certainly. Awesome. Clinical placements are hands-on work. I had one of my headaches to start Oh no. With, but it's gone. Where they're responsible for patients. 140.75. How do you enjoy the job? Being on placement? Yeah. I enjoy it. It is difficult at times. Oh, it's bound, yes, it's bound to be. Yeah. yeah. And when needed, they're supervised. What do you think it would be like if you were paid just for your time while you're on placement? Um, I think it would make such a difference. This is my fifth placement I've done. Yeah. Busy, busy, busy. I know. Yeah. What do you love about nursing? Why are you doing it? Because I love helping people. I get a great satisfaction from helping people and making their day better. Yeah. After an eight and a half hour shift, I am pretty knackered and then I'm having to balance my assignments and exam prep, my portfolios and all of that. So we've just left Amaya's house and we're on our way to meet another nursing student, Ella. She's managed to squeeze us into her really busy day. I'm catching up with her at her part-time job. So what's it like trying to juggle your work, your placement, your study? It's exhausting. I mean, having a lot of things on your plate can burn out very quickly. What do some of your days look like? How long are they? So I probably get up about 5.30, head off to placement about 6.30. Spend eight and a half hours there. And then quick turnaround for a six hour shift here, working at the bar. Hello. Just getting pretty exhausted with the work on top of placement. That's a long day. Yeah. The other day I like had my watch on and told me I've been standing for 17, 17 hours. Oh my gosh. Her current placement is on a mental health ward at Wakadi Hospital. So on placement, are you actually working? Yeah, so now that I'm second year, I'm getting like my own patient load, two or three patients. I'm responsible for them for the shift. Do you think that students should be paid during your placements? A hundred percent. Like I know it would make all the difference and we are working hard. We're not just watching, like we are involved and we are looking after these people essentially by ourselves. But the financial pressure for nursing students is coming at a price. A lot of nurses are leaving New Zealand. My goal is to end up in Australia. I mean, they have 
uh, increased pay, safer staffing, less patient workloads. I've got, personally I've got eight friends that are already planning on moving over there. We're just going to go over together, yeah. Alright, if I want to understand nursing, I'm going to have to learn how to be a nurse. First thing, I've got to get into the right gears. Just divert your eyes, Some, a six pack, a six pack's coming out. <laughs> oh yeah, it's not bad. I'm ready for my shift. Whoa, this is busy. Yes, he does female there. So I'll just call it out? Yes. Cleo? Yeah, she is. All right. Come oh, Cleo's little, okay. Oh, hi, Cleo. Do you have a full throat today? Oh, so I'm Haley. I'm the nurse, and this is Patty. We're just going to put this on your finger, OK? What is this going to do? It's going to check your oxygen level. Okay, we're going to so check your oxygen. Oh, too. So maybe we can turn that on. That's a great, turn it on. great start. Turn it on. 96 and 84. Open up and say, ah. Say, ah. How many patients would you see a day? At least 20. 20 a day? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it gets a bit overwhelming. The next patient is uh, Atafai. Waiting time usually is about at least 45 minutes to an hour. Kia ora, I'm Patty, your, your trainee nurse. Come with us. Please tell me that scale doesn't lie. It's lying. Yeah, <laughs> one of the worst lying scales I know. Let's go look at your reading. Yep, yeah, here we go. That's a good temperature, I know that. That's 36.6. Okay, you want to record that side? Yeah, good luck through there, good luck through there. So what, does people are constantly in here waiting? Constantly. All day? Yeah, 12 hours, 8 to us. Oh, so she's been off school since Friday. Any respiratory issues? Coffee, runny nose, or throat? Coffee, runny nose, yes. I'm really sorry to hear that. Yeah. How do you find the nurses here when you come here? Are they good? Yeah, they're really, they're really good. They're always um, very informative, very nice. This is one appointment we've had prescribed impetigo. We've dealt with a potential ear infection mm -hmm. and also we've renewed... Some inhalers. Some inhalers. That's quite a successful... Consultation. Consultation. Yeah. All right, team. OK. Bye. Get well soon. Get well soon. It's extra busy. Why is that? A lot of our GPs in the locality, or even like wider, um, don't accept any more new environments or registration. So kind of everyone kind of comes here because they get seen anywhere. A lot of bloody hand washing in a day. Okay, if you could sit here, my bro. Uh, can I say, call him that? Yeah. As a nurse, you're good with that. All right, everybody, ready? We're going to do this. Perfect. That's a really, that's really good. That's a really, really good heart rate, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Blood pressure. I didn't know. I was just copying what she said. <laughs> Why do you love nursing? It's making people's life that little bit more better. The smiles. You like nursing because of the smiles? Most of all. <laughs> you can go, but if you feel a bit nauseous or sick or anything, just yell out, there's plenty of nurses around. Including, you can yell out for me as well. You feel well looked after? Yeah. Yeah. Are you glad I didn't do the injection? No. Oh, didn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I've only done a few patients. That was really hectic. Yeah. That's a normal day for us. I'm knackered. <laughs> yeah. In terms of getting people into nursing, you need more you need more nurses here? Absolutely. We always we're always trying to find nurses all the time. And do you feel that Students should be paid for some of the mahi that they do when they are actually doing healthcare work? Because it's a struggle when you're a student anyway. You know, you have to give up a lot and sometimes family support isn't always there. It would encourage more people to come work here. Yeah, a lot more nurses to apply to go and do the degree and work here. Or we'll work wherever they want, but obviously we just need nurses nationwide. Nurses! Tucked away on a Dunedin street, the signs in the window are a clue as to who lives here. The nursing shortages are getting a whole lot worse. Um, I'm very, very concerned for our future. Worst case scenario is that the health and wellbeing of our nation is going to continue to go down the tubes. What's the single biggest thing the government could do that would actually boost nursing numbers? Finance is the biggest problem for nurses. Would that include helping students through their placements? So at the moment it's, it's unpaid, would you want to see that change? Absolutely. So when I was a student nurse, I went and lived in a nurse's home. I, my meals were free, my uniforms were free, and as an undergraduate nurse, 
I was paid as well because it was recognised that the work that I did, even though I was a student, was work. And so we were paid. And that was the way it should have been. Nursing schools started in the early 1900s and even Queen Elizabeth visited one on a trip here to Dunedin in 1954. But in the 1970s, nursing education was moved to universities and polytechnics. When it moved, the housing, food, uniforms and pay stopped. Nurses' homes closed and um, that was a big mistake, I think. Under the current system, do you see quite a high percentage of, of dropouts? The dropout rate is about one in three, and that's totally unacceptable. And it is very much a gender discrimination issue that a female-dominated um, uh, health workforce is actually discriminated against. And it would be only fair to give us a living wage, just like all the other apprenticeships um, are receiving. A new report from Te Whatu Order confirms nursing students do need more financial support. However, it makes no promises to deliver. There is no detail. Have you heard Te Whatu Order talk at all about paying students on placement? It's not something that, that seems to be a priority for them. Well, Anne's definitely set out a clear case for why students should be paid on their placements. But it got me thinking, what about other nurses' organisations and what do they think? So we've come to Auckland to talk to the Nurses' Society and get their two cents on the issue. So, David, do you support students being paid on their nursing placements? Not for clinical placements. Why not? These students are on the job for weeks, months at a time. They're in charge of patients, medications, they're dealing with deaths, all sorts of things. Well, they're doing things under supervision. And they're important tasks and skills that they're learning, but their purpose is to get experience. Their purpose is not to be part of the workforce. 50 years ago, there were hospital-based nursing schools. Nursing students suffered under that, patients suffered under that. You start paying them and they are de facto employees and there is a risk that the service and operational needs of facilities will begin to dictate where they're placed and how they're placed and the length of those placements. Can't they remodel that? No. There's no, no changes that could be made to ensure that this could work? Not, not in our view. Do you know what it's like for these students? I mean, they're paying on placement, they'll be paying double rent, they don't have any financial support and they're finding it really, really tough. Uh, we, we do and we sympathise and that is common to all students but paying for training placements in our view would be counterproductive, it would undermine the educational needs of those students. Um, I don't agree. We need to focus on the health and wellbeing of our country and we have to be able to deliver that care and to do that we need our student nurses. It's pretty simple. Our final stop is to find out what the government's doing about this huge rate of nursing student dropouts. Because at the moment, one in three drop out. And a key reason for that is the financial pressure that they're under with their, you know, more than 1,100 hours of unpaid placements. My key focus at the moment is for us to pull every possible lever around retaining the people um, that we've got um, working here, um, making sure that we train as much as we can within New Zealand and making sure that we um, make it as easy as possible to come from overseas and work in the New Zealand system. Does that include any financial support? Because at the moment these nursing students are getting nothing. We are doing some earn and learn programs in parts of the country as well. For as nursing we... students? For Bachelor of Nursing? Yeah, for nursing students. And so what we're doing is looking at um, testing different models. But is anyone earning as they learn at the moment, any nursing students? Um... So at the moment down in Canterbury, for example, we've got a pilot program down there where um, there are Kaimahi Māori nurses. Um, that program's got about a 93% retention rate where there is an earn and learn um, program there. The important thing for us is just to really continue to um, improve the placement experience and continue to make sure that we've got as many nurses coming through the education pipeline as possible. And, you know, there is an affordability factor um, for, for us and for the education sector. 
about whether we could afford to do that right across the health education curriculum. But you also can't afford to lose them. I mean, you need thousands of nurses in your healthcare system. You're losing a lot of them through while they study. So doesn't the affordability argument not work here? Look, for us, the, the key thing there is that what we need is, is qualified nurses on our front line. It's about how do we do that with what we've got allocated at the moment and how do we maximise that? If you had a message for Te Whatsu Order, what would it be? We are doing valuable work and we are going to be the nurses that come next. There's a bunch of super keen, motivated nurses out there, but I definitely think that financial support is needed if you want to keep us in New Zealand and keep us getting through to the finish line. Yeah, so look, what I'd, what I'd say is it's great that you've chosen a career in the health workforce. It's great that you're um, learning um, and you're getting to bring those skills that you've had in the classroom into our workplace and um, be supervised while you put those skills in action. And I look forward to you joining us permanently. Well, she's actually going overseas. She's going to Australia as soon as she graduates. Yeah, that's a, um, that, that's a, that's a real shame, and I hope one day that um, she'll come back to New Zealand at some stage in, in her life and um, will be able to work for us. Mm -hmm.